Meanwhile, hundreds of bills remain in limbo, among them several high priority environmental pieces of legislation aimed at making Oregon's buildings more resilient to climate change. But unlike other bills, letting these bills die could mean our state misses out on hundreds of millions of dollars in federal funding. Environmental reporter Cale Williams explains. So there is what I can describe as a tsunami of federal money coming our way. We want to make sure that Oregon families and communities have access to that, that we really get our fair share. That That's we make Pam Marsh, a Democratic representative from Jackson County. And the tsunami of money she's talking about, it comes from the Inflation Reduction Act. That bill set aside $369 billion, specifically earmarked for climate action by states. The package in the Oregon legislature, which is focused on building resilience, was specifically crafted to tap into those funds. It would create incentives and rebates for heat pumps. It would change building codes to increase efficiency, and it would create a navigation system to help Oregonians make the most of all the state and federal rebates and tax credits available to them as they upgrade their homes. If the package of bills passed, it would do all those things, but it had another, arguably more important function. The bills are frankly less about the about Oregon investing in the devices themselves or the upgrades themselves, and more about setting up a really smart strategic infrastructure so that we can take best advantage of that federal money. The package is a product of a 27-member task force that met throughout last year. Meredith Connolly, Oregon director of the advocacy group Climate Solutions, was on that task force. She said she heard from residents all over the state who were asking for help to make their homes better equipped for our changing climate. It could bring in hundreds of millions of dollars of federal funding to actually do this at scale in Oregon. Just to see that all potentially thrown by the wayside. Absent. The price tag for the package of bills was roughly 20 million, which would have come from the general fund. But an analysis by Climate Solutions found that if the state fails to pass the bills, it could miss out on a minimum of 250 million in direct federal funding for heat pumps, efficiency upgrades, and workforce training. These aren't limitless pots of money from the federal government, and if other states have acted and they've, they've expended those dollars and, and doled them out, Oregon could miss its chance. And that's just for this one package of bills. There are many other bills focused on toxic chemicals and children's products, drought relief, and natural climate solutions that had bipartisan support but could fall victim to the walkout. These are complicated issues. Um, and people are working really hard around the clock to make sure that we have good solutions and to have a handful of people prevent that progress is, it's devastating. Now, a spokesperson for Republican lawmakers hasn't responded to our questions. But assuming they don't come back to the Capitol, Marsh did raise the idea of including these bills in a larger budget bill if the governor calls for a special session later this summer. For Connolly, though, the idea of another political season passing with no movement on environmental issues isn't something she wants to contemplate. The outcome can't be that we didn't act on climate. That's just unacceptable. Uh, we can't take a year off. Kale Williams, KGW News.